So far we've discussed a number of different ways to attack a DNS server. The DNS denial of service attack. We talked about attackers directly connecting using client queries directly to a DNS server. We've discussed using reflection techniques using the incorrect return address. We've discussed amplification. In all of those techniques, you still need a lot of queries. You still need a lot of attackers. You still need a, a large number of these attackers or simulated attackers making those requests. So what if you want to maximize your investment if you're an attacker? It's all about money. It's all about cost. As you defend against an attack, you buy bigger and bigger servers, bigger and bigger bandwidth pipes, right? So now the attacker has to spend more and more money to attack your site to generate more and more traffic. Well, now if you want to be a really clever attacker, you can use uh, another vulnerability in, in the DNS system, and that's called an open resolver. So as an attacker, you want to maximize or amplify your attack methodology so you can use the least number of attack devices or bots or clients and get the maximum benefit. So what is an open resolver? Well, if you remember way back when we started talking about the normal DNS operation, we talked about a client sends a query to the local DNS server. And the local DNS server then tries to resolve that address. Well, that's called a resolver. Normally, you see this little lockbox, there is a security mechanism set up for this resolver. This resolver will only answer for clients inside this service provider network, in our service provider network. It will not answer a query from an attacker out here. The attacker will try to send to the local DNS server and say, give me an answer. It will reject that because these attackers are not on the same network as the service provider. So this is what we call a secured resolver, right? It's, it's, it's locked. Unfortunately, maybe due to just ignorance or misconfiguration, there are many resolvers like this ISP resolver that don't have the security mechanism in place. And we call that an open resolver. Now, in order to make the internet more secure, there are a number of companies that publish lists of these open resolvers in order to try to shame them into fixing their configuration, closing those loopholes, putting security in place so they don't act as open resolvers. And why is it so bad to act as an open resolver? So I'll show you as it, we would go through with an attacker. Well, first thing the attacker can do is sort of prime these open resolvers. So sending a request to the open resolver, what is the resolver going to do? First thing it's going to do is go try to resolve that name. So it's going to go to the site, and it can again ask for a large record, like the any record, or ask for DNSSEC. And that site's going to respond, and then it's going to put it in the cache. So now, this open resolver not only has gone out and done what it appears to be a legitimate DNS query, but they've also put it in its cache. So the next time the attacker sends the request to this open resolver, it can just answer. It doesn't have to go back to the original site. It can answer out of its own cache. But again, if we give it the incorrect return address, now it's going to send that cache response to the target site and fill up the bandwidth. So what if you do this with 20 million of these open resolvers? and run through them. And they just send a couple of queries, and what if you use different sites? Now you're leveraging the cache on each of these open resolvers. So as the additional hackers or attackers can hit the same open resolvers many, many times, it's going to find in the cache that record and send it to the pipe. So this is a clever adaptation to use the open resolver vulnerability to amplify the attack even further so now it's an even cheaper attack for the attackers. Cost them less money, causes more damage. So in future sessions, we may go over ways to mitigate this type of attack. I would say a very simple technique is that you don't want your resolver, you don't want your ISP or your company's resolver to participate in these types of attacks. So the first thing I would say is, please double check your resolver security. Make sure that your box is not participating in these sites of attack. Right? And maybe another way of preventing this is to have, if this is your site server, don't answer queries from these open resolvers. That might be another method. 
And in the case of F5, if you have a server here that is from an F5 big IP, it will automatically reject all unwanted packages, right? all unwanted responses. But that's going a little too much into the mitigation side, and that is a topic for another video. So thank you for sticking with us uh, as we talk about DNS denial of service attacks. So far we've covered the normal operation of DNS, then a query attack, and then a more sophisticated reflection, amplification, and uh, using the open resolvers to make an even more efficient attack. So as they say in a lot of other videos, don't try this at home. Thank you very much.